TV! Alright, welcome to Solid Engineering and Mechanical. Here's Dicko. Hey. <laughs> Master CNC lad. On the job. Alright. So we got the GoPro app here. Helping us to make sure that everything's working. Alright. But enough of that. Okay, so it's a crappy day outside, which is weird because it's just uh, the beginning of summer. And um, I'm doing what I would call part two of the uh, build. We've uh, got all the suspension in. It's been a couple of weeks now. You can tell I've a bit more hair since the last time. Dicko being noisy in the background. But um, the uh, second part of the build uh, was originally going to be wheels and tyres, which uh, if you come over here with me, have a quick look stack of these uh, gorgeous big black rubber things here, which are the uh, new Geolander 35 all-terrains, dynamic 16 by 10 inch steel rims, very nice, very strong rims, but uh, what I'll do is uh, in a second I'll jack the car up and show you exactly what I'm doing today because um, being a wider rim and a wider offset, the uh, wheels hang out of the guards a little bit, so uh, going to combat that by putting some wider flares on there and I'll show you what they are in two seconds. To combat the extra width of this tyre and the offset, we've got these flares here from Cut Snake. Now these are an awesome flare, they're made of ABS plastic. They're all still in the packets because uh, I'm going to keep them neat and tidy until uh, they need to go on, but uh, that's the job for today. And uh, yeah, so the, the first stop will be uh, to get these old flares and take them off the car. Now, as you can see, and I can't take any responsibility for this, but the original owner of this car, or the second owner, I got it off, uh, bashed it into a few things, and uh, there's a bit of damage here and there. Um, when I got the car, this one over here was uh, coated in a lovely layer of gaff tape everywhere, and uh, so I thought I'd get a bit of drift spec on it and stitch it back together so it'd at least hold together, but um, this flare's done its time and uh, it's going to come off today, so uh, I guess the next thing is uh, the big job of taking all the old ones off and then getting ready to put the new ones on, so um, yeah, let's get into it. Ten mil sockets. Ten mil sockets. There's never any ten mil so- oh hang on. Oh no, that's an eleven. Yes. I've undone one bolt. Let's get some power tools. There you go. Off in one piece. Now as you can see, there's no back seat in my car right now. Which is awesome. Because I don't need a back seat. And look at all that room. It's like having a, a Sandman panel van, but an off-road version. gonna chase up there's a bolt up under here and get this off but uh, I'm not gonna go crazy showing these coming off because this isn't a tutorial this is more me just getting them off to put the new ones on so uh, we'll get this done quick smart and we'll uh, get on to putting the new ones on so how do you know when you get an Australian land cruiser because it's all full of red dust everywhere from being in the outback. A piece of panel that hasn't seen the day of light for 23 years. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Now onto the front ones. Now these ones are apparently a bit more of a pain, but I'm sure it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. From what I remember seeing, there's some bolts inside here, so I've got to take the indicators out. All right, close to the bolts. Don't drop the spanner inside the guard, and 
There we are. Right now the reason these flares are going on is if you look down the side of the car here, where the wheel and the guard meets, it's pretty much spot on. But uh, you come around over the top a little bit and you can see it's pretty much flush with the side of the tyre. So what I'm going to do now is take the wheel off and put one of the new ones on just to show you in comparison how wide the new ones are and why we need to put the new flares on. So. Here we go. Back on the ground. And as you can tell, the tire's out about here now. What I've done is I've got the flares out of the box and out of the bags and sorted them from rights and lefts or drivers and passenger or drivers and passenger if you're in America or anywhere with left hand drive. We've got two bags here as well. Uh, Cut Snake have got one obviously business card and some stickers but they've got this cool little survival tool in here as well which is a cool added bonus. But then uh, in here we've got uh, the rubber gaskets and a whole bunch of self-tapping Allen head stainless bolts. So. Let's get started. Now actually as I unpack this, um, what I'm going to do today, which is a bit unconventional, is I'm not actually going to use the rubber gaskets today. I'm going to save them because the car is actually getting re-sprayed very soon I hope. So what today is all about is getting the flares onto the car and making sure they fit nicely and, and in place and I'm sure they will. And then once the paint goes on pretty soon, then we'll put this on. Because at the moment, I'm not really too fussed about putting any scuffs on the paint because it's all going to get rubbed back anyway. So it's all about these and these and uh, making the car wider for the bigger tyres. All right, so here are my tools for what I'm going to do now. This is the way I'm going to do it. So there's the uh, self-tapping Allen head bolts, nice stainless ones. You've got a paint pen, nice little snap-on cordless drill, a pilot drill, six and a half mil drill which is only just slightly bigger than this, I might even go for a six just so it's a nice tight fit. And I've got this washer here as you can see because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it, might be a bit dark in here, sit it exactly where I want the hole to go and then I mark out on here where I want to drill the hole, get it sitting right, nice and far out there. Got that right in the middle. Go nice and slow because it's only plastic. Drill the hole. Get the bigger drill. And what I'm going to do now to protect the outside of the floor is I'm going to drill it from the inside. So that way it's drilling away. And there's no chance of hitting the flare with the chuck on the drill when you go through and it goes and you grind it. So that's going to sit in there in a really good spot. Now we're going to do that about 48,000 times more and we're all good. Here's how I think I'm going to do this. Having not done this before, I'll just chuck the GoPro off here. Now I've got a roll of gaff tape and firstly do the old gaff tape trick and tear pieces off and stick it to my clothes because apparently that helps to stop the residue from the gaff tape staying but where you're putting it because you need to get a horrible sticky crap left over it's good gaff tape this stuff all right so still plenty of stick there and the plan of attack will be to get these fitting as good as possible before actually doing any holes. Alright, they're pretty well in line. That's pretty good through there. So there you go, that's sitting roughly where I want it. And the gap all around the edge is pretty good. Well, obviously once the rubber gasket goes in, That'll uh, 
it'll fill up but also when the bolts are in it'll pull it up against the panel too so I think um, standing back here I'm ready to try putting my first one on where they all go. all the way down because I'll do it by hand so I'm going to risk stripping the holes just to get a better feel for it by hand anyway but uh, there you go there's the back half on now I think the trick on this front one is going to be to Put one bolt in and then line the rest up off that bolt. This is quite a bit to line up. Crappy lighting this afternoon because it's belting afternoon sun, so I might shut the door and uh, stop recording here because it'll be a, an hour long video. But uh, I'll get back to you when this side's done. Alright, so it's about 8 30. I've just finished fitting these flares, um, all fit just nicely, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, obviously, haven't got the big tyres on yet, but um, so I've got to fit the rest of them and, uh, and balance them up and stuff like that, but we'll do that next. Um, one thing I am doing in the short term though, which um, I might kick on with a little bit tonight, is uh, this beloved spare wheel carrier, which has been on the car since forever, is not going in the bin, but I'm going to cut it up. Yes, shocker, I'm going to cut this up because I'm going to sacrifice some room in the back of the car for the spare wheel inside the car, instead of having this disaster on the back of the car because as good as they are, it's just a pain in the bum every time you're getting in and out of the car. They were good, you know, for families with 25 kids and seven seats in the car and stuff like that where you need maximised room or if you don't want to put spare wheels on the roof because you can't go into car parks and stuff like that. But I reckon I can afford the room in the back. If I can't, then, you know, I'll go back to plan A and put it back on the back of the car. But um, I think I can do it and um, yeah, it's gonna make it just so much easier, just quick open the back, especially when we're doing stuff like drone work and all that sort of stuff where we need to access gear or just, you know, getting in and out just to do the shopping and stuff like that. So uh, that's me tonight. I'm not really gonna show this thing being made because it's kind of just cutting and welding and boring stuff, but um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll show you after I've finished it. It won't be anything exciting, just uh, probably send it down to Scotty at Edward Sound powder cutting. Uh, when I do something with a bumper as well, but um, yeah, it'll just be black and, and be holding a wheel up. So yeah, I'll uh, kick on with this and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.